So, we all know that there are weird people all over the world, like Joe Exotic, Nicocado Avocado, or just anybody on those, like, My Strange Addiction type of stuff. But there is one guy who I've seen who's probably the strangest person I've ever seen, and his name is Tony Doc Shields. Tony is a very strange man. Not only does he have a rockin' beard, but he's also a magician, a wizard, and a goddamn psychic, apparently. Oh, 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 wait, but he's also a writer and a painter, cuz... why the hell not? This man has a very interesting track record, so let's start off with his most well-known achievements. Back in the 1970s, the Loch Ness Monster was a very popular mythical animal, with lots of supposed pictures and eyewitnesses of the beast. Wanting to hop on the bandwagon, Tony went down to the loch and took his picture of the Loch Ness Monster. Unlike most pictures, however, where the photographers say they spotted it surfacing for just a few seconds, he apparently performed a spell with his witches, which I'll get on to later, which summoned the Loch Ness Monster to the surface. He got quite a bit of attention with his picture, and it even appeared in the Daily Mirror. Honestly, I think it's quite obvious by the story alone that this picture is just complete bullshit. What's weirder is that he drew a picture of what he thinks the Loch Ness Monster looks like, and it's definitely not pretty. Yeah... So, unlike most Loch Ness Monster enthusiasts who believe that the monster is an outdated plesiosaur, Tony believes that the neck of the creature is actually a nose or a proboscis, and that the creature's actual body is underneath it. Also, when I said that he had witches to help him, well, they're actually his daughters, which is pretty fucked up if you think about it. He apparently used them to help him summon the Loch Ness Monster and fairies. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's a no from me. Another well-known thing that he did was summoning Morgor, which is basically a Cornish Loch Ness Monster ripoff, and he used ancient Celtic rituals to summon it. Here he explains to us how he prepares to summon the beast. How do you go about invoking sea monsters, Doc? Uh, what's the trick? Well, I simply make myself uh, as attractive as I possibly can to the beasties, and uh, it's a kind of abstract invitation that's uh, thrown out to them. Unsurprisingly, the picture is fake, as he used a plastic model to fake the picture. All of this may sound incredibly bizarre and weird, but it isn't the weirdest thing that he's actually done. The stone is haunted. So you know earlier how I mentioned that the doc is a wizard and a psychic? Well, apparently he is also able to communicate and control stones. In this wonderful excerpt from his film, he shows us a stone that he was given to in Cornwall. Apparently, the stone is magical, and with this, we get one of the best pieces of audio clips ever made. The stone is haunted. He then shows us his psychic powers by moving and controlling the stone while he's talking. Sorry, this is so fucking bizarre. Just look. Logan Petrock Serpentine. As this wizard now intones, give to us a living sign, do my bidding, Loganstone. It's alive. After he performs his ritual like thing, he picks up the stone. Only for his hand to get burned. Jesus Christ. All of this is incredibly bizarre, but wait, there's more. Tony was also a believer in the Owl Man of Mornin', which, just like Morgor, is basically a ripoff of a more well-known cryptid, this time being Mothman of West Virginia. He was told by two girls, June and Vicky Melling, 
that there was a large, big feathered man on the St. Stephen's Church in Cornwall. Why is it even so funny? I'm just reading this off Wikipedia. He kept getting on reports of the monster, but most people really did not believe him, since most of the witnesses who report to him were either close friends or relatives of the Doc. Also, when you look at some of Doc Shield's other findings, he doesn't really have the best track record of being a very reliable person. Uh, and uh, I know, I know, I know this is completely absurd, but I doubt a giant ass bird man monster thing is not very likely to exist. After all of his crazes died down, he fell a bit into irrelevancy. He left Cornwall and went to live the rest of his life in Killarney, Ireland. Wait a minute, I was in Killarney just a few weeks ago. I could have had the chance to see him. Ugh, damn it. Oh well. But he does seem to be fine. He's even having some fun at the pub. What a lad. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like it. And this wasn't an attack video on him. It was just look at some of the weird stuff he's done. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Peace.